the age of religious wars, the French Wars of Religion, Part 3. Non-combatants suffered more than soldiers. For every pitched battle, there were numerous forays, sieges, lootings, and massacres. Peace treaties were repeatedly arranged, only to be quickly broken. The original commanders on both sides were soon killed, not in battle, but by assassins. Francis, Duke of Guise, in 1563, and the Bourbon Prince of Caen in 1569. These murders launched a blood feud in which the Catholic Huguenot zealots drove, strove for retaliation by ambushing and slaughtering the remaining leaders. After ten years of back and forth, the Huguenots, who were excellent on defensive campaigns, seemed to be gaining the upper hand. In August of 1572, the cream of the Huguenot nobility gathered in Paris to celebrate the marriage of their leader, the young Bourbon prince, Henry of Navarre, to Marguerite de Valois, sister of Charles IX. Admiral Coligny was among the celebrants. He had just about persuaded the easily persuaded Charles IX to undertake a major shift in royal policy, to declare war on Spain and support the revolt of the Calvinists in the Netherlands against Philip II. As a French patriot, Coligny hoped by his, by this strategy to end the civil wars and divert the nobility into fighting their old Habsburg enemies. As a Protestant, he hoped to secure Calvinism in France and the Netherlands. Obviously, young Henry, the new Duke of Guise, could never agree with this plan, nor was the plan acceptable to Catherine de' Medici, who reckoned that a Franco-Spanish war would produce victory for Philip II and destroy the Valois monarchy. Thus, Catherine felt forced to ally temporarily with the Guy's faction in order to stop Coligny. On August 22nd, four days after the wedding, an assassin paid by the Guy's shot Coligny, with merely, but only merely wounded him. The enraged Huguenots immediately threatened Charles and Catherine with revenge, and the wounded Coligny pressed Charles yet again to initiate war to calm his Huguenot brethren down. But Catherine and the Guy's had another solution. Someone, likely Catherine de Medici herself, convinced poor Charles IX that Coligny and the Huguenots were about to kill him and seize power. The only escape was the, am was the ambush of all the traitorous Huguenots immediately. Shortly after midnight on August 24th, St. Bartholomew's Day, armed squads broke into the houses where the Huguenots lodged. The Duke of Guise personally killed Coligny in revenge for the murder of his own father. Prince Henry of Navarre, managed to save his life by promising to turn Catholic. By dawn, the whole city was in hysterics, taking up the bestial cry, kill, kill. Calvinist women and children were senselessly hacked to death and dumped into the Seine River. Violence simply carried over. Students murdered teachers, debtors murdered their creditors, looting and bloodletting continued for five days. Such was the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, in which at least 3,000 Huguenots were killed in Paris. As word spread throughout the country, another 10,000 were killed in provincial towns. Some modern historians, numbed by the gas chambers during the Holocaust or the firebombing in Dresden, dismiss this episode as just another atrocity. The St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre should be remembered as a mass murder in Europe's greatest city, plotted by the leaders of the state and triggered by religious hatred. When the news reached Pope Gregory XIII, he was so delighted that he gave a hundred crowns to the messenger and had a Thanksgiving aria sung at the following Mass. Catherine de' Medici, upon seeing Henry of Navarre attending his first Mass, laughed uncontrollably in the, in the cathedral. Charles IX, on the other hand, grew even more neurotic, sickened with guilt at having abused his royal power. He also realized the massacre discredited the Valois monarchy without breaking the Huguenots or ending the conflict.